Hey guys, we are learning about uh, absolute extrema and the mean value theorem today. So we are already into lesson 4-1. Can you believe it? We're learning some calculus. This is awesome. Okay, so let's start with a few definitions. Um, first, let's talk about absolute max and absolute minimums. Okay, so absolute means exactly what you would think it means. It means like the only one, like the biggest or the smallest. Okay, so the absolute maximum would be if I had a function, um, not like that, just kidding, that would be a minimum. Okay. An absolute max would be in a function like this where I had one point at the very top of the function that is the biggest value, it's the greatest y value on the entire function. So that would be a maximum. A maximum is like the biggest y value on the whole function. So if you think about, when I talk about the function, Remember, I'm talking about y values, okay? So we're saying, like, um, what is the function doing at x equals 3? We're talking about what's the y value, right? Because the function is the output, okay? So when I say what is the absolute maximum, I'm looking for the y value that is the greatest of all the possible y values on the entire function. Likewise, if I'm looking for an absolute min, I'm going to look for the y value that is the absolute, the smallest possible y value for, of all the other y values, okay? So absolute max um, is the biggest, absolute min is the smallest. Now the other words you might see this, um, see used for these would be um, global max and global min, okay? They mean the exact same thing. You're going to see them interchangeable. You're going to see uh, me say global max. You're going to see absolute max, all of the above. Okay? So then let's talk about relative maxes and relative mins. So uh, relative ones aren't quite as intuitive because uh, you could have a relative min even when your function goes on forever. So let me show you this. Let's do this function if it'll ever catch up to me here. Um, yeah, while well, it's waiting to catch up, I'll just draw my function. At any point, it could catch up with me. Let's see. Ready? Now go to that one. Go. Now. Okay. Let's see if I have to draw it on here. Nope. Still not catching up. Okay. So, well, we'll just talk about another word while we're thinking about it. So, extrema. Extrema is another word that you're sometimes going to see, and basically extrema means max or min, okay? So it's like the extreme values. So it's like what's the, uh, a maximum is an extreme value, a minimum would be an extreme value. Ah, there it is, okay, good, perfect. So what are the, what are the relative extrema of this function? Okay, so relative again means like, um, it doesn't have to be the biggest, of the entire function, but we're basically talking about peaks and valleys here. So where is it at the top for a certain interval and where is it at the bottom? Um, and so the way the definition says, uh, it's the y value that is less than or equal to all the nearby y values of the function, right? So if you look at something like this, see how this is a peak, all the nearby values like here and here are um, smaller than that. So this would be a relative extrema because it is like, um, it's a peak, right? And then the interesting thing is on this function, we also have a relative uh, minimum right near it because that one is like a valley, right? So it kind of peaks, uh, it kind of peaks here and then it kind of does a valley and then it peaks again. So we're going to have another relative max right here. Um, and then this one happens to go on forever and ever, so it doesn't have an absolute max or an absolute min. It just has a few relative ab, uh, maxes and mins. Uh, so let's look at the next term would be, uh, well, we talked about extrema. So the next term is like a critical value or critical number. Um, and these are super, super important, okay? Um, so I might over-explain these a little, and I apologize if I over-explain it too much, but let's talk about the critical numbers. Critical numbers are the x values at which f of x exists, but f prime of x is either zero or undefined. So let's unpack that a little. Okay, f of x 
exists, but f prime of x is either equal to 0 or f prime of x is undefined. So where are our places where f prime of x is 0 and undefined? What does that actually look like on a graph? Well, again, let's just look at, let me just draw one. So I have this graph here. Okay. Now, the first question is, does f prime, or does f exist? Well, yeah, it's a continuous function, so f exists for the entire interval. So where um, is f prime of x 0 or undefined? I'm going to make this one a little bit curvier. Okay. Where is f prime of x 0? Well, let's take a look. Right here, f prime of x, if I drew a tangent line, a line tangent to the curve, let's just pretend that one's tangent. <laughs> We would draw a line tangent to the curve at that point. The slope of the tangent line is zero, right? That's really what I'm saying when I say f prime of x is zero. It means the slope of the tangent line is zero. So where am I going to have horizontal tangent line? Oh, wait. You mean those things I've been asking you on tests actually come back? Yes. <laughs> this is what it means. Okay, horizontal tangent line. Here's another horizontal tangent line. Here's another spot where the tangent line is has a slope of 0. And there's another spot where the tangent line, well, maybe I'll make that one a little bit closer. Um, it, there we go. There's a spot where the tangent line is also equal to, the slope of the tangent line is equal to 0. So our critical numbers exist anywhere that f prime of x is equal to 0 or it is undefined. So what does an undefined tangent line look like? Well. Let me tell you, I tried drawing this like four times, and I just can't do it. I'm just not great at this drawing yet, but I will get better at it, I'm sure. So I'm just going to show it to you right here. So here is one where the slope of the tangent line is undefined. So see how this curve goes, and right here, if I drew a tangent line on that exact point, the tangent line would be uh, vertical. It would be straight up and down. Well, that has an undefined slope, okay? So an undefined slope um, means that the, the f prime of x is undefined. So this would also be a critical number. Um, and so, yeah, I was looking to see if I had any other examples. Uh, that's the best one, really. So anywhere where f prime of x is undefined or where f prime of x equals 0, we're going to have a critical number. So, then basically, what do we do with these critical numbers? Um, well, all critical numbers, um, we're, if we're looking for our global extrema, like our global max or our global min, the first thing we do is we find all of our critical numbers. So we find anywhere where the slope of the tangent line is zero or where the slope of the tangent line is undefined, okay? Then we find the y values at each of those critical numbers and at the endpoints of the interval. Then we figure out which one of those y values is the biggest. Okay? So a super important note, absolute extrema can occur either at critical numbers or at endpoints. So our global max or our global min could be endpoints or at our critical numbers, at our peaks and valleys, basically. But relative extrema can only occur at critical numbers. So it, it can only occur at peaks and valleys. And so when we're talking about relative or local mins and maxes, we are not going to consider the endpoints at all. Okay, so that's all for this video. Now we're going to...